Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. Last time we posted a video on Revit architecture, we took a look at placing grids and levels. And so now that we've got some grids and levels in our project, what I'd like to show you is a little bit of walls and how you would place them. So you've got a number of options as to how you create your walls. And once you get into the wall tool, you can see that you've got a couple different uh, different ways here. So we've got architectural walls, structural walls, and then walls by face. Using a walls by face tool is, as you can see, a, a massing technique. So we're going to skip over that for today, and we're going to focus on the architectural walls. So once I click on architectural walls, you can see that in the type selector here, it loads a basic generic six inch wall for us. But if we click on the drop down arrow, we can get a whole bunch of predefined walls that have already been created for us. So what I'm going to do is just start this off with a generic 8 inch. And once you select the wall type that you'd like to use, you get a number of options underneath your ribbon. So just to go through those, we've got a height and we've got uh, levels. So we can use constraints to go from one level to another or we can specify the heights. So if I say unconnected, it's giving me right now uh, a default height of 20 feet. So I'll just change that to 10 for the time being. And then you have your location line. So the location line is how you determine where your wall is going to be once you left click your mouse. And then the chain option just allows you to stay within the wall command. So if I uncheck this, it's going to create the wall that I create and then exit out of the command. If I leave this on, I can just keep creating walls as I go along. Now the other thing that you can do is put an offset so if you're drawing it'll actually draw that wall one foot away from where you're drawing. I'm going to leave this as zero and then you can also use some different different uh, techniques in your draw command. So you have the pick lines option which comes in very handy if you're working with grids and then you have the other options here like pick face, uh, the arc commands, rectangle and just your standard line. So let's get a look at some of these. We'll use just the, the standard line tool and we'll start drawing. We've got our location line here is our wall center line. I'm going to change that to finish face interior because just a moment we're going to use the pick lines option. So anywhere I want to draw a line I can start and because I'm in the, the chain function as you can see up here I just keep drawing these lines wherever I like. <clears throat> so I can use the just a left click and, and define where I want it to go or I can start punching in numbers like five feet and it'll define the actual length if I want to come over here I can type in 12 foot 2 but that's what I actually want and hit enter and so now you can see I've got a number of, of walls with these jogs so I'm just gonna exit out of this command now I've got some lines and we'll come back up to a default 3d view and you can see those walls that we've created are at 10 feet high. So I'm going to try another one. I'm going to come back to my first floor and I'm going to do this a little bit differently this time. I'm going to come back to wall and instead this time I'm going to choose the pick lines feature and instead of giving it an unconnected height I'm going to go from the first floor which we are on and I'm going to take this one up to the second floor. So now any walls that I draw are constrained from the first floor up to level, second floor. You can also define an offset. So if I wanted the top offset to go to the second floor and maybe two feet higher, I could just type in two feet here and it would still be constrained to the second level, but it would go up an extra two feet. So let's just put a one in there for the time being and we'll take a look at that <clears throat> in our 3D view. So I got my pick lines option and the finish face interior is when it's going to create it and so I'm just going to come in here and select this grid line so notice when I hover over the grid line I get a dashed line and it's telling me where that wall is going to be so this line right here on the right is actually the interior finish so I could press the space bar to flip that but it doesn't matter because this wall isn't any it doesn't really have any characteristics other than the fact that it's solid filled. But if I change this to a four and a half inch interior partition, you'd see that we'll just turn on the thin lines and we'll go over to our, our detail, turn that to fine. 
And so now you can see the, the layers, the drywall. So it's on an interior line, an interior face of that interior partition. So that is the length of our grid line. We might not want it to be that long, but we do want it along that line. So if I want to change it, I simply select the wall and grab the grip. And then I can bring it back. I'll just bring it to there, and you'll notice that it trims it off nicely. And we'll do that over on this side as well. I'll just bring that back up to any old arbitrary, any length. So that's a 14 foot 3 wall. And if we want, let's try making another one. We'll just go back to our, our basic wall generic 8 inch. And this time I'm going to create a rectangle using the rectangle tool. Now it's still on finish face interior. So if I start at this one here, or let's, let's use this one. Notice that on our grid line, it's to the inside of the wall. So again, I can select this wall at any time. Now that they're all highlighted, I can come back to my type selector and pick any of these walls that are already in here. So for this one, let's choose an exterior brick on wood stud. And we'll notice that our brick is all on the wrong side. So if we press spacebar, it takes us to the outside and we're no longer lined up with that grid line. But that's no matter. We can simply come to the Modify tab and go to the Align tool. And now we'll select our grid lines and we'll want to choose our preference from wall center line to wall faces. And now we can select that, that uh, line that is a drywall. So I think what I might have done is done that backwards. I want to select the line that I want it to line up to first and then the wall afterwards. So I'll just say wall faces. We'll try that again. And you can see it brings that wall now down to the grid line. Let's go we'll line the rest of these up. And there you have it. Your walls are all placed. Again, I did that one, that last one wrong. So you always want to make sure that your order of operations is the reference line and then the wall from the line that you want it to move to. So I choose my grid line and then that inside of the drywall. So let's take a look here. We did these ones with the same, same parameters. So if I come and take this into 3D, you can see now that I have these walls. And if we go to an orthographic view, we've got a projection here so it's saying up to level second floor with one foot if I go to an elevation we should see that that is one foot above our second level line second floor and that goes up 10 feet so that's pretty handy and one of the nice things is afterwards if I decide that this first floor isn't going to be at two foot it's going to be at one foot eight I can simply type in one foot eight and all my walls are adjusted because that was the base constraint for all these walls that we just created. So we'll take this back into a 3D view and show a nice shade mode. And you can see how easy it is to get some wall geometry put together. Now if I wanted to do a couple trims, a couple modifications to this, that's also very, very simple. Revit's very intuitive as to what you want to do with your walls. So if I wanted this wall here to intersect with this one, I simply again grab that grip, bring it up, and it trims it at that level. If I wanted to change this to that same wall that we chose for the last one, you'll notice that it actually cuts the brick into the drywall and does all those, those trim commands for you. So this is very handy, very nice feature. If I want, I can select these, make these change over to that same one as well. So we got some nice, nice things happening. If I wanted this to just simply terminate around that corner, this is the trim extend command. You'll find that in the modify tab as well. And this is nice. This acts similar to the fillet function in AutoCAD. So anytime you have walls that extend past where you'd like them to, you can just go up to the trim extend click on the two walls and they'll come together nicely. 
So that's a quick look at walls. Uh, next time we're going to come back and we're going to look at creating different wall types. We're going to get into uh, different assemblies and show you some of the ways that you can modify those walls using uh, a profile. So that's going to be really great. Join us next time and thanks for watching. Bye now.